I've never seen these kind of readings from Barry's suit. He's channeling over 2.86 billion joules of energy. That's a combined equivalent of, of almost three lightning bolts. Hey everybody, it's Charlie. This is going to be my Flash episode 11 video. There was a whole bunch of Easter eggs. We even got to watch Barry Hulk out on Speed Force. So we got to break it down. There's a new round of that Flash Ring giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave a comment about the episode on the video. Careful for spoilers. If you haven't seen it yet, here we go. Top 10 WTF and Easter eggs. So starting with Cicada's list, there was a giant list of names. Most of these were people from the production and comic book names. Anytime there's a giant list, they always put a lot of comic book Easter eggs on it, but they also just because there are so many names, they can't always use a bunch of comic book characters. So they'll put people from real life on the list or just random people that the writers and the producers like in real life. So Kira May is a musician in real life. Guy Geist is a Batman villain from the Chuck Dixon run. Bork is an actual Batman villain. Like he was their Hodor at the beginning of the episode. He held the door for Norvox so they could get away. I couldn't find Kesha Moore anywhere. She's probably somebody from the production in real life. Zach Mueller is a politician. They list him for petty theft. So maybe that's them making a political joke. Shauna Baez is peekaboo. She was a big part of the episode. Heath Saunders is a Broadway star in real life. Reed Rice, Al Cernos, Daniel Calvert, Ian Shire, and Greg Anderson are all different people from the production. Norvok, obviously a big part of the episode, and then I couldn't read that last name. But number nine, Bork holds the door so that Norvok can get away. Now, obviously, this is all setting up the idea that villains can also do good things, so you should treat them just like you treat normal people. It's been a big arc on The Flash this season, especially with Nora in Weather Witch. I don't know if that's meant to be political allegory for real life, like reaching across the aisle, being nice to the people on the other side or anything like that. But they have been getting pretty political with the DC TV shows this year. The whole thing with Bork is that his special power in the comics is immunity to magic, but he's also like a really big person. This is kind of what he looks like though, so the Flash version is just a little bit different. They sort of set up the running plot line with the cure in the background. Caitlin needs the DNA from one of these new metahumans, which she then gets by the end of the episode because of her Killer Frost arc, which I'll talk about in a second, because they had this whole big thing going on between the two of them. But you get a little bit more of Barry and Nora doing the CSI thing. They've been trying to do more and more of that this season because that is Barry's real job when he's not being the Flash. Number eight, Sherlock versus Nora. I actually kind of like this storyline. I haven't been so happy with Sherlock in the first couple of episodes of the season, but I feel like he's got a lot more interesting now that he's pursuing Nora and trying to out this big mystery of who she's working with in the future. He starts studying her journal and starts wondering about the timeline. Really the big payoff of his arc in this episode was learning that there definitely was two different people that were working on this special journal of Speed Force symbols and the time language that she had. Like, ah, there is another person that's helping her in the future. And I love the way that as they shot that, his face was transposed on the journal because his face is the same face as the Reverse Flash, who is the person that's helping her in the future. Number seven, Cicada destroys Nora's spine. So you get to see him eviscerate another metahuman that was on that list. Like it's getting pretty gruesome. Like he's getting more and more powerful. So he's just ripping through them in broad daylight. He just does not care at all. But very clearly, this is meant to be a mirror of Zoom breaking Barry's spine. Guys, I can't feel my legs. The only thing about this storyline that I wasn't quite as happy with was how thick they laid it on. Like they really want you to worry about Nora, but they bent over backwards to let you know that she was healing and she would get better. I don't, you know, people, maybe they forgot about what happened during season two. Like, oh yeah, they're speedsters. They'll heal super fast. The whole way they explained her not healing faster was because Cicada took her powers away with the Speed Force dagger before he broke her back. But I guess the way they're explaining the powers of the dagger on the TV show is that as long as they're not in proximity to it, the effects of the dagger will slowly wear off, meaning that their powers will return. I was a little upset that they didn't wheel out Harrison Wells' chair. I felt like that would have been an awesome reference to make. Like, oh, we have a wheelchair that you can wheel around in for a second. And it would have just been another way to tie her to the reverse flash in the future because that's the same chair that he was wheeling around in in the 100th episode when they went back to visit him and throughout season one. Six was Killer Frost versus Caitlyn because of the cure. So, I mean, they had a couple of funny moments between the two of them with Killer Frost like erasing and rewriting and just trolling her on her dry erase board. Then later in the episode, she just flat out breaks it and Caitlyn's like, ah, oh, Jesus, what am I going to do now? 
This was one of the other storylines where the writers tried to bend over backwards to let you know that Caitlyn never wanted to take the cure. Like she tries to tell Killer Frost, no matter what happens, I don't want to take this. At least at the beginning, Killer Frost is like, yeah, I'll believe it when I see it. Like she's not so ready to trust Caitlyn implicitly. But then by the end of the episode, they sort of come to an agreement. And even though Killer Frost is right to be wary of this, like it's definitely going to fall into the hands of someone bad and go completely off the rails. But it's the writers letting you know that Killer Frost is always going to be Killer Frost. Like we did that in previous seasons with Caitlyn's character where she had her powers, then she lost her powers. Then season five was all about finding the balance between the two of them and becoming a more fully actualized version of the character. Number five was that second conversation that Sherlock had with Nora. Maybe you could just take me to that Flash Museum in the future. Is it safe for non-speedsters to travel through the Speed Force with you? That's all very clearly set up for Barry and Iris to go to the Flash Museum in next week's episode, albeit through Nora's mind. Like, they don't physically travel to the Flash Museum as far as we know. Just based on the teaser, they're traveling through Nora's memories of the Flash Museum. And that sort of explains how you get this weird walking version of the reverse flash suit with no face in it. Like, what the hell is going on here? Well, now we know. It's just a memory, so it's sort of this nightmare that she's experiencing. Number four was Flash vs. Cicada Brawl in the pool hall. That is just a knockdown drag out fight. Barry smashes the chair across him. It was the beginning of their WWE part of the episode. Now he gets his ass handed to him until he gets Killer Frost help later during their second fight during the episode. formally introduced they call me killer frost so number three killer frost flash tag team against cicada the way they explain killer frost's immunity to cicada is that his dagger can only leech the dark matter from metahumans that were created in a very specific way people like barry people like the recent metahumans the reason why Killer Frost is immune to that is because she got her powers biologically through a completely different way. She can still be dazed, like when he uses that big area of effect attack, but she can use her powers to keep the dagger at bay. And then Barry, number two, just completely hulks out on Speed Force. Barry. You're never gonna hurt my daughter again. So now this isn't him using negative speed force or anything like that, but they're slowly, I think, pushing into that idea. And it depends on how the TV show wants to use that as a concept narratively. But in the comics, there's a very specific way that the negative speed force works. It sort of pollutes the Flash and makes him kind of evil or at least give in to his more baser instincts and sort of explains why the reverse Flash is the way that he is. Because the negative speed force makes you give in to all the worst things in your personality. He gets way more aggressive, way more destructive. So maybe they'll deal with that in a future season on the TV show. Don't worry too much about it right now. But this is all about compassion. Like remember that overarching storyline, treat the villains like you would treat normal people. So Nora gets Barry to chill out like please don't kill him because that will only make things worse. Number one WTF was Cicada looking at that evil scrapbook at the end of the episode with Cisco and Nora pictures in it, just letting you know that he would be targeting them in an upcoming episode. Also, probably trying to steal that cure from Cisco. But obviously, there's a big twist where Barry's like, I get it, we can defeat Cicada by healing his niece, so we'll appeal to his heart. They also really tried to lay it on thick how much Barry cares about Nora. That's clearly meant to set up the big reversal when he finds out that she's been lying to them this whole time and working with Reverse Flash so that the truth of that lands on him so much harder. Like, oh, I care about her so much. How could she betray me? Oh, my God. Like, you know, big WTF moment. So let me know if there are any Easter eggs that you spotted in the episode that I didn't include in the video. I'll be working on my trailer video for next week's episode and some new Game of Thrones next that should post in the next couple of hours. We just learned a whole bunch of really cool stuff. I'll name a giveaway winner when I post that Flash trailer video. Click here for my brand new Avengers Endgame teaser breakdown and click here for my brand new Shazam trailer video. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.